Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This is the shot we are looking at today and we will be going over and breaking down how it was created. If you've been watching my videos before, you know that I often use 3D to establish my scenes before painting over them in Photoshop. It's a workflow I've developed mainly to avoid starting my painting on a blank canvas, but the 3D also gives me a perfect perspective and a chance to play around with lighting early on. Here's the 3D scene I started out creating. All the main elements are in here, but not overly detailed. What I do before rendering this out and starting to paint is to drop on some painted textures that I've made. I've over time created a library of textures that work well for this method. I thought I could show you how some of these look and how I go about applying them. Just to be clear, this is not really the same as properly texturing your 3D objects if you don't intend to paint over the render. I just thought I'd get that out there first. I don't really care if things don't look perfect here, as I will end up going over most of the areas in Photoshop anyway. It's mainly to get some colors onto the canvas and to get a feel for what color and texture each element can have. Let's start by looking at some stone textures for the bridge. We are in Cinema 4D and I'm using Redshift as my renderer. So I will use Redshift materials, but this can be done with any renderer really. I'm gonna start by adding in a texture tag to the base color of my material. I will also turn off any specular and so on, so we just have a matte material. This is really the most basic form of material you can create, so for those out there who's been asking what shaders I use and what trick makes it look 2D, here there really isn't any. Mainly the fact that I paint the textures give it a painted look. In the texture tag we can link an image, and this is where I will drop in my own made texture. As a Patreon of mine, you can actually get access to some of these textures, however you can also just paint your own ones. This stone wall I've used in a number of my paintings. Some of my textures I make sure are tiled, but this one for example is not. It has some more grungy details towards the edge and works well to sort of slot into the corners here between the pillars of the bridge. I play around with what type of projection mode works best, either UV mapping or cubic often are good for this type of stuff, and I can offset the textures and tile it with these settings here. I'm happy with this placement, but let's say I want it to look a bit brighter for example. Then instead of changing the source image, I can add a color correction tag in my material and play around with that. This is often what I end up doing in many materials. I use a generic painted material that contains some brush strokes and variety in tones, and then I just alter the colors here in Cinema 4D. After assigning a texture to each of the elements in the shot, I rendered it and got it to look like this. It doesn't look particularly good yet, but it's a great start that I can now dive right into painting on. Even though this takes some time to make, creatively I feel like I've bypassed the stage I often find most challenging if I were to paint it from scratch. Over in Photoshop, I started by painting the sky and background. By having even a simple version of that in there, it allows me to see the full piece and get a good understanding for what, you know, the final thing might actually look like. Even though this is still missing detail at this stage. The scene is referenced from a real place, which happens to just be down the road from my house here in Innsbruck. So I took some photos of the houses, the bridge and the mountains behind it so I could look at that while painting and draw inspiration from it. Painting these mountains was a lot of fun. 
that could be quite graphical with high contrast between snow and rock. Also, as the snow is reflective, I used a close color to the sky for the shadows in the snow. When the far background was established, I went on to paint in the details over the 3D render. Things like definition in the stone texture of the bridge took some time to paint, but makes a huge difference when it's there. Also adding some elements like signs in the shot takes away that sterile look it had when it came out of the 3D. This shot will be used as sort of a transition between scenes in my film. It establishes a location, it lets us know that we're now in an urban environment, but not far away from the mountains. I think some of these cutaway shots are my favorites to create. They're crucial when setting a mood for a film. If you're new to the channel, I'm currently creating an animated short film, and most of the videos I'm putting up here, uh, at the moment at least, are breakdowns of scenes uh, that I'm creating for it. I will try to share as much as possible of the process I go through to create this film. In some of the other shots I've already made, it's been mainly set in summer, but this is the first shot now from another season. We're still missing some wires running along the poles here. My first thought was to just draw some in Photoshop, but I decided to go back to Cinema 4D and draw them as splines there instead. That way I could be a bit more accurate on how they were laid out, and it allowed me to change things up quickly. I exported them and brought them back into Photoshop, where I could paint in some details along them. Finally, I wanted some movement in the shot, so I thought having a sort of cargo train roll by slowly could look cool. I made a simple model of one of the containers in Cinema 4D that I animated from one side of the screen to the other. Then I took the frame from somewhere in the middle and brought that into Photoshop where I added some colors and texture to it. I then projected that image back onto the container and generated a UV map for it so it, the textures stick to the object. And I also rendered a part of outlines on a white background using Sketch and Tune. Putting these two passes together, I get quite a nice look that fits my 2D looking style. As the keyframes I animated it with were linear, I could then in After Effects duplicate a few of these and offset the time for them, making one container into a full train. By color correcting them in different shades, I added some variety. I thought this could be like the final few cargo carriages of the train, so it starts by being on screen, but then rolls off out of frame and reveals our final background. I had a lot of fun making this shot, and I'm now ready to take on the next one. Hope this was interesting to you. If so, feel free to subscribe and write any questions you might have in the comment section. Here's the final scene one more time. Thank you very much for watching, have a great day and I will see you in the next one.